Hey, kings and queens, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Nicole. Thank you so much for joining. Today is episode three of the Raw Vegan series. Today, I have a special guest, Nathan Morris, aka the Nice Cream King on IG, aka the Raw Natty Nate on YouTube. He's a raw vegan influencer on social media and YouTube. I've been following him for some time now. He's, he's also married to Lissa at Lissa Raw Food R Romance. If you guys saw episode one, uh, she was the first person I interviewed for the Raw Vegan series. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, they are such a cute couple. I just love them. Um, so he's the author of The Inside Scoop. Um, mm, you guys have to check out his book. It's, it's marvelous. I actually purchased it myself. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to soon. He has so many delicious recipes in there for nice cream. Nice cream, y'all. Uh, the book was photographed and designed by his wife, Lissa, at Lissa Raw Food Romance. Um, I'm sorry, it's at Raw Food Romance, but her name is Lissa. Um, yeah, you guys, I'm excited about this interview. So without further ado, we're going to bring him on now. So stay tuned. Right, let me get my video going. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. You too, you too, Nicole. Thank you for having me on here. This is great. No, this is great. I'm glad that you were willing to come on. This is awesome. Nice to meet you in person. I mean, I've been, you only met me, you know, a couple of weeks ago, but I've been following you for a while. So oh, it's awesome. Really? That's yeah. awesome. Right on. Yeah, so this is great. So thank you so much for joining me today, Nate. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on my channel. So. The first question I want to know, tell me your story. I actually know the story, but I want other people to hear your story because it could um, encourage them, inspire them like it did me. So tell me your story, who or what inspired you to go raw vegan? Okay. Um, you know, it was kind of a combination of a couple things. Um, first and foremost, uh, it, was, it was mostly watching my mom reverse her stage four kidney cancer with raw foods um so wow yeah that's that was that was the huge thing she had she uh got cancer you know and in one kidney and she had that kidney removed and then uh, she didn't change her diet or lifestyle and uh you know got kidney or uh, get cancer in the other kidney you know several years later wow so she, she found um i, I kind of turned her on to fat sick and nearly dead you know mm -hmm. She being a, a retired cardiac nurse, she had, you know, some medical background and, but she was also raised in that environment, that treatment based environment, you know? Right. Um, so getting to the root cause of things is, you know, really important. So she, she found that, um, you know, changing her diet was, was definitely the most important thing that she had to do. So we sent her to the Gerson clinic and she followed Gerson for years, uh, not years, uh, months, like probably about 10 months. And um, in that time, she had the mindset, she's like, I'm already healed. I just have to do the work. Right. And uh, I was like, wow, that's, that's powerful mindset, mom. You're, you're, you know, you're going to heal yourself. I know it. And uh, when you do, when you find the cure, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do what you're doing because we have so many family members that we've watched, you know, pass away with cancer or yeah. different, different ailments. So she did find the cure and it was, it was, uh, going raw and she, she did, you know, of course her case was very extreme, right? She right. was trying to kill herself with cancer. So she actually did, um, quite a bit of mono meals, like eating just okay. one fruit and she okay. did a lot of, a lot of fasting and, and even dry fasting where she would eat nothing and drink nothing. Wow. And, uh, okay. So of course, you know, being in the position that she was in, that was necessary in a lot of ways. But for me, I was like, I don't know if I really want to do this. This is insane. You know, just like, I don't really like the way you eat. I want my chips and hummus and, you know, and I mean, <laughs> in plant-based, I was still plant-based, but I, I really wanted to, um, to find out how to do it properly. And I just wasn't yeah. really So several months go by. Um, I'm still plant-based, you know, still vegan, you know, not buying any leather or eating any honey. I mean, I was really strict, made that really good, you know, the, the ethical connection years before. Okay. And, uh, but what really was the kicker for me was I was skiing 
and um, I, I rode, I was, I was single that day. I didn't have any friends with me or anything. So I was riding um, with just strangers. And I got talking to this guy and um, we started talking about, you know, what we do or what he, what, you know, he, he started asking me questions more than I was asking him questions. Mm -hmm. And told him about my mom. And at the time I was working in a, a medical clinic. Uh, pulmonary clinic and I'd worked at the hospital uh, for a few years before that was in the clinic so right. I worked the coronary care unit the same unit my mom worked in so I got mm -hmm. to see a lot of you know open heart patients they would come up to our unit and you know that that was really you know playing into my mind as far as like how you know how much the the food we eat really affects us right right exactly like we can't breathe even I'm working in this pulmonary clinic and we do sleep studies where you know people have issues uh oxygenating their system through the night because they're not breathing properly and it's because of you know uh, several different you know things but diet being you know one yeah. of the most you know uh predominant issue so um i'm skiing and i'm t you know or i'm on the lift with this guy and he you know starts uh you know asking me like you know what what i do and i told him about my mom and he was like yeah he's like i i reversed my stage four colorectal cancer at the age of 42. Wow. Like going raw. He's like, I've been a raw foodie for 44 years. And I was 44 like, 44 years. So that means he was 86. Right? That's what I said. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not real good at math, but I'm like, you're 86, dude. And he's like, yep. He's like, you know, I've been, you know, just eat mostly uh, sprouted living foods. You know, he called himself a raw foodie. Wow. And, uh, I was like, holy cow, I'm like, and this guy's name was John. And I was like, John, I, you know, like, I'll never forget you, man. You are exactly the way that I want to be when I'm your age. I want to be up here with my grandkids or even my great grandkids. This is such a fun thing to do. But a lot of times we don't treat our bodies properly or we don't even move them properly. So we're like, you know, when some sort of fun event comes, you're like, well, hold on, let me, let me just get my body. And you try to go in and find your body and put it on for the day, you know? Right. And so here's this guy saying like, yeah, you know, it's all about keeping, you know, active and, and eating, uh, mostly, you know, a high raw diet. You know, he didn't, he wasn't, a, he wasn't, uh, he didn't eat any cooked foods, but he wasn't like, you know, poo pooing cooked foods or anything. Yeah. But, um, so, so, you, so he was, he was not even fully raw and he was able to reverse. Yeah, you no, know, he was fully raw. Oh, he, he was, was fully raw. Okay. Yeah, he was fully raw, but he didn't like, he didn't promote fully raw necessarily. He, uh -huh. or, you know, eating any cooked. He just was, he just was like, he said he's a raw foodie. And uh, so, and I told him, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I said that I would follow my mom, you know, and listen to her, like what she's doing after she finds the cure and he, mm. he like took off his goggles and he like looks at me like pierces through my soul you know like my future self or something like he's all you should listen to your mom nate and he puts his glasses back on and i was like holy man okay all right i gotta figure out how to do this thing. yeah so that's when i went home that night and i just started binge watching youtube um on raw food you know raw food this raw food that raw vegan just really trying to figure out what what is what does raw vegan mean like what do you eat you know yeah and um so because i knew i didn't want to adopt the same um lifestyle my mom was living because i'm not fighting cancer right right I, right I'm a, you know i'm a you know i consider myself an average you know healthy you know healthy uh, American man or whatever, right? You know, mm -hmm. and, you know, been raised on all kinds of funk, but you know, still eating plant based. Yeah. But, um, you know, yeah. After meeting him, that was that was it, man. I I went home, got on YouTube, and that's when I found Lissa, and I was like, wow, this chick has done some amazing things, you know, with raw food, and I just, <laughs> I really liked her tone and. And just her whole vibe online, yeah. you know, just how she would really describe what's going on and different the different addictions and and how to remind yourself, like just take it day by day. Like I'm a raw vegan today. And yeah. It's like I, I can do that. Like yeah. okay, today, today I'm a raw vegan. You One know, day like, at a time. Yeah. And uh, of course, like her being a um a pro photographer, like her dishes looked amazing. 
So, and then she had this book, this 30 day meal plan. And I'm like, oh, this is perfect. This takes the whole thinking out of it. Yeah. And so I, uh, I purchased her book, which was epic because it had everything that you'd need for that particular day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the ingredients like spices and stuff even, as well as the tools that you'd need to make it like right. a blender or a dehydrator or whatever. Um, so from that point on, I started to build my raw food kitchen. And I was like, all right, I've got to get a high speed blender and I need a dehydrator. And uh, cause you know, I just, I basically, you know, that was it. Like meeting John, seeing my mom, these are two people who reverse cancer plus working in the medical field. I knew that I wanted better for myself. And the only way was to uh, just basically kick out all of the other funk, the funk that is so fun to eat, right? Like it's just like, <laughs> it's delicious right here. You know, you swallow it once it's gone. You're like, oh, why? Why did I do that? You know, <laughs> why did I, do that? <laughs> I ate a whole vegan pizza, you know, or whatever, uh, right? You know, like, oh, this is, this, this soda is vegan, you know? So <laughs> I had to get rid of that mindset and um uh, in the book was was key for me because uh, like i said it just took the thinking out of it i was yeah. like oh, i'll just follow this plan this is simple yeah. enough and you know there would be certain things for that i would uh really enjoy so i would just go back to making that same thing mm -hmm. and uh, you know still you know um trying to ingest different uh information you know right on, on how you know what we need to get or and what was really cool about the book as well her book was it had all of the calorie breakdown so i knew i was hitting numbers that i should be hitting i wasn't missing out on anything mm -hmm. uh, so yeah that's that's you know that's the story of how i went raw and, and that's um, like a major <clears throat> a major story and that and it's, it's very inspiring that to hear that raw food Get out there. there well, go. first of all, you supported your mom. I, I, I really just want to give you some props on that. Like you wanted to support your mom. She was going through something and you did it along with her like that. That's, that's some love right there. So mm -hmm. I want to commend you on that. And Very then difficult. just the fact that raw foods are so powerful that it allows our body to heal itself. Yep. You know, what I mean? and we're, I'm talking, that's cancer. We're talking cancer. Like this is a major illness yeah. that people get. And you're telling me that your mom was able to reverse her cancer along with the other guy you met. Like that's, if that's not some inspiration for y'all to go raw, then I don't know what it is. Yeah, exactly. um, that's awesome. I'm happy that your mom, how's she doing? She, she's, she's doing well. Yeah. Um, you know, nothing, uh, you know, it's, it hasn't come back as far as we know. Woo! She gets checked and everything's you know moving right along and she has stuck with the lifestyle as well of course you know her coming from the you know just you know 60 some years of treating herself funky yeah um, you know she you know has she she definitely eats a different than we do but she's still raw and she you know of course vegan um but yeah, a, a bit more extreme in some yes. ways. Extreme being, you know, she still does, as far as I know, she still does practice intermittent fasting where okay. she, she'll just feed for like, you know, she'll have like a, a six hour window where she'll yeah. put <clears throat> calories in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but of course, her being the age that she's, you know, um, that she is in her activity level, it's not like she needs, you know, the same amount of calories that like a, a young man or an athletic woman or something. Would yes. Have. Wow, this is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah. I, I, I've, I've heard the story before, but I, like I said, I wanted other people to hear it because it's very inspiring. It's, it's encouraging. And it's just, it's like, yeah. it's a wow. It's a wow. You know, <laughs> one thing too, that, um, you know, being a man, you know, um, I asked John on the lift, I was like, John, like, how's the flagpole, you know? And he's like, ah, oh, still flying, you know, full mast. And I'm like, dude, like, that's amazing. Because, you know, that's another really big issue that we have in our world today. Like, the way I describe it is we have the, the uh, circulatory system, right? We've got our, our kitchen delivering all the goodies, which is the through the blood. And what we have is the, the aorta going to the heart, which is the size of like a nice big smoothie straw, right? Now, the one going to our 
our, our members, right, you know, male or female, is the size of a coffee stir stick. So, hmm. so, of course, if we have issues there happening, that's kind of like the precursor to different heart issues. And so, yeah, you know, and I'd work with several, several men, you know, in their uh, anywhere from late 40s to, you know, early 60s that had issues with the flagpole. Flagpole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, that also is, you know, for maybe the, the men that may be tuning in or, you know, the girlfriends that may be thinking of their man. I mean, hey, you know, that's, that's you know, we want good blood flow, you know, for, for, for more reasons than one, you know, for sure. But So this diet helps that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's interesting how um, it, what we put in it goes in everywhere, right? If you're eating, you know, super oily and high fat foods, then that's going to be in your bloodstream. And, you know, there's, of course, different, you know, the concept of eating, you know, different cooked foods or, uh, you know, animal, um, you know, the, the, the cholesterol and saturated fat from animal products, these kind of things like build up in our hoses and mm -hmm. our plumbing, right? So, yeah, the, the ones, the, the hoses or the inner plumbing that's going to get clogged first are the smaller, uh, you know, tubes. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's always, you know, a, a telltale sign. And like I said, you know, being a dude on the ski lift with this guy, I was like, well, hey, you know, he's 86, like probably doesn't really fly. Maybe, you know, half mast or something, but no, full mast. Hey, all right. Good, man. You know? <laughs> Hilarious. I love it. Um. Okay, so tell me about some of your benefits that you experience because uh, I've seen some pictures. Tell me about your, I've seen yeah. some, um, some pictures. You know, um, before actually going plant-based or vegan, um, I was eating what is considered a uh, ketogenic diet, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is just, you know, super uh, lean proteins <clears throat> and no carbohydrates um, and, you know, kind of higher fat. And, um, and I was working out quite a bit at that time because I actually had I took in a, a, a fall and, you know, broke my ankle and my wrist and I just wanted mm -hmm. to be as healthy as I could. So I mean, this ketogenic diet, I didn't realize what it was called at the time. And um, my recovery rate and stuff was, you know, pretty slow. Like I would have actually like even just like bending my arm, like laying, you know, down if my arm was bent, like my mm -hmm. hand would go numb. Mm. Uh, different things like that so then going plant-based um i didn't necessarily work out the same that i was before and i started eating a lot different where i was eating you know i was uh doing you know same what what is considered improper food combining yeah so take some rice <laughs> cake, throw some almond butter on it and stack it with a bunch of strawberries or cherries which looks delicious and it's you know it's plant-based yeah it's really high fat and you know you're mixing the sugar with the fat and so yeah. I started to actually gain uh a lot of the weight back of course because i was i was eating a lot more carbohydrate foods right before i was in that ketogenic state with no, no carbs um and so then going raw um it, it was it was amazing because I just I had started to jump on my trampoline. Mm -hmm. I had just like a little trampoline, so I'd just jump on my trampoline, listen to some like music every single day. I would jump when I got home from from my work, you know. Um, and as well as I was chopping wood, like it just was really fun. We had you know um, a fire pit in our yard, so it was nice to have wood ready to go for that. So I was mm -hmm. I had a friend who'd bring me wood and I would chop wood. And noticing like, man, I don't, I don't, uh, I didn't have the, the feeling of, um, say that, you know, in my hand where my, my hand would go numb. And I definitely like within about seven months, it was about seven months and I had dropped like 53 pounds. And because I, I was following Lissa's meal plan, which, which is, <coughs> would, would be considered extremely low fat. And mm -hmm. protein because it's kind of more along the lines of like an 80 10 10 way of what way of life which is right uh yeah Doug <laughs> graham has his book 80 10 10 and it's uh 80 percent of your caloric intake coming from carbs 10 percent yes. coming from fat 10 percent coming from protein plenty enough to build muscle and you know function just fine throughout the day and that was the plan that i would follow which was her 30-day meal plan and 
<clears throat> so that was the biggest thing. Of course, you know, people that I would work with, they started to kind of wonder, like, are you okay? What's going on? Are you doing drugs or something? Because, you know, when you lose a lot of weight, people wonder what's going on, right? <laughs> But the people that I would work with knew like, wow, he's just eating like massive salads. I would have a melon for breakfast, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a smoothie, more fruit at snack, and then a big salad. And I would make it right at work. I would blend my, I actually would bring my blender with me to work so I could make the dressings at work. And just to kind of show the, the girls that I'd work with who would walk across the street to get, you know, their sandwich or whatever and come back. And I'm like, sitting there in the sunshine eating a fresh salad that I made like you guys are slacking I'm already eating like totally. <laughs> so um, that was the biggest thing noticing was or you know was uh yeah just less inflammation um and you know a little faster recovery what felt like on the things that I was doing I wasn't you know exercise hitting the gym and exercising really hardcore or anything like that but you know, losing all that weight, you know, yeah. pounds. Yeah, in seven months, how much, 53? Yeah, it was like 53 pounds <laughs> in that seven months time. And Wow, it's a and, lot. Uh, yeah, and I was, I've, I was really, I was really uh, strict, you know, I didn't, I didn't have any, you know, alcoholic beverages with mm -hmm. friends, and I didn't like, you know, I, I just was doing that, I'm a, I'm a raw vegan today, you know? Yeah, I one day at a time. Uh, yep, yeah, so I just stuck with that, and uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. Of course, you know, it's tricky for other people to see those results and want to hop on the, the train with you, though, you know, like, it just goes to show how addicted to our food we are, because people, you know, would see, you know, in the medical field, there's a lot of individuals who are very unhealthy, very overweight. Yeah, it's because, you know, you're sitting down a lot, it's high stress. Um, and there's lots, of, it's always somebody's birthday. You know, there's always somebody <laughs> bringing in some sort of cakes or cookies or even right. the doctors. We had one, actually, his, the cardiothoracic surgeon, one of the surgeons would bring up to our unit four dozen donuts, and there was only 10 of us in the unit. I'm like, what are you doing to us? <laughs> trying to kill you. Yeah, I'm like, you're trying, trying to kill you. To, you're trying to get me on the table, aren't you, man? Like, oh, my gosh. Oh, um, my goodness. Yeah, but that was, you know, the biggest thing that I, I mean, I've always had pretty high energy, so I didn't really necessarily notice that my energy was, you know, and I didn't journal. That's the thing. Right. Like, I didn't journal, like, what's happening day by day. Of course, there was a lot of things that were coming up in my life that made me really deal with emotionally because I wasn't using food to just kind of numb myself and get into like a uh, an out of body kind of coma. You know the out of body experience where you're like eating the chips next to you and you're like, I should stop eating these chips. And you're like, Yeah, oh, you know, the bag's almost gone now. Right. I might as well finish it. You know. And you just keep on going. Yeah, you can't stop. And you then know? you feel disgusting afterwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I said, it's 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 amazing right here. You know, if it's right here, it's in the mouth. It, it's amazing, but as soon as you swallow. As soon as it goes down, it's all, it's a wrap. <laughs> that's right. Well, those are, those are some great benefits. That's, that's very encouraging as well. Shoot, 53 pounds in seven months. I've been trying to drop some fat for six months. And oh. anyway, but yeah. Alyssa told me I need to be watching. Alyssa, your wife, everybody, his wife, the, the one I interviewed in the first episode, she told me that I need to go low fat. Yeah. Lower fat. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's yes. wild too because you'll you'll have um, different dietitians or nutritionists that will say that if you're in the twenty to thirty percent range, that's mm. considered low fat. But mm. it's not it's not low enough to actually just really start utilizing. Of course, body movement is huge too. We got to move yeah. a little bit, but yeah, they you know how the saying goes: like the fat you eat is the fat you wear. You know, and and it, it does add up. It, it adds up. And, and it's, it's amazing too, when you have already, uh, fat cells, they don't ever go away. Like they just shrink, you know? Right. So, so it's and, easy to put fat back on. Mm -hmm. It's, and it's different for me now, Be when I was younger in my twenties, thirties, and even in my early 40s, I'm about to be 46 next weekend, but I didn't have to worry about fat. Yeah. Now I do. It's, it's, it, there's a difference. Something done changed. I, I used to be able to eat fat. It just makes sure I didn't eat, um, too many calories. Now I got to focus on both. 
Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, lower fat and not, well, yeah. I know you guys are, I know you guys can eat a lot of calories and not gain weight, but I'm not there yet. I still have to kind of monitor. I'm not like yeah. doing no, no low, like 16, 17 or anything. Oh, good. But I try That's to, good. right now, I'm, it's, it might be low for you guys. I'm trying to like 18, 1900 right now. Okay. I used to be able to eat 22, 2300 yeah. and, and, and maintain or drop if I was trying to, but it doesn't work that way anymore. But I think that now if I'm reducing the amount of fat I eat and I'm eating more raw, I'm going to see if that makes a difference. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, reducing that fat down and tracking is so huge. Using the yeah. to track, you know, we chronometer. use chronometer. Yeah, chronometer, and that gives you a good rough estimate of what you're getting a day. And you're like, some days you're like, oh, I did real good today. And you're like, oh my gosh, it was 18% fat, you know? And uh, <laughs> you're like, uh. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of on the higher side. Of course, you know, to, um, you know, kind of shrink that down a little bit, you can always add in more fibrous foods, you know, more, more greens. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, but I know it's tricky. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, yeah, so more more greens and all that kind of stuff. Lower fat. That's what I'm trying to do now, trying to change up some stuff in my diet. So I want to touch on protein because I'm so tired of hearing people say, I can't do plant-based or raw because I don't get enough protein. I'm like, well, then eat enough protein then. It don't have nothing to do with the diet. You're just not eating enough because you're not eating enough. Right. But oh man. Please tell tell people that you can get enough protein. I seen your six pack. You guys, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna insert a picture right here. You you know, obviously he's getting enough protein. He's he has a six pack. You know, he has muscles. Muscles. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's the thing. Like we all have muscles, and and muscles, of course. Like we've been kind of we've been brought up to believe that we have to eat muscle muscles to gain muscles. Uh, and that's what meat is. That's what people think of protein is like eating the flesh of another creature. And that's the uh, the protein. You, know, you eat the muscle of the, you know, the creature and you get the muscle. But really what's interesting is protein is just an amino acid. And that amino acid is within everything. Like every single thing that, we, that is edible off the trees, the vines, the bushes, all of it has protein, mm -hmm. it has that amino acid, and it's actually more bioavailable for us because our body's not having to break something that down that it doesn't necessarily recognize, and right. it, it's easier to assimilate it. So it's a higher quality of protein. Now, of course, there's you know several different um, plant-based proteins that are, that are extremely high uh, you know, in their protein content, um, and, and being, you know, on the cooked side of thing, like there's tempeh, seitan, you know, tofu, you know, uh, uh, mung beans and, you know, edamame and, and, you know, different kinds of beans. Yeah. Uh, and what, what we do a lot of is we sprout a lot of lentils and, um, and alfalfa sprouts and mung beans and radish and broccoli sprouts because microgreens and sprouts actually have more protein than, you know, say a chunk of flesh ounce per ounce but of course if you picture that's a lot of lentils you have to eat but yeah that's a lot as long as you're eating enough like the thing is is what's incredible is i don't necessarily think that it's there's so much information out there and you can of course be swayed or or bend to whatever you want to believe is true but we also have like a lot of people with uh like um kidney issues you know, and adrenal fatigue. And these kind of issues, you know, are, are because we are eating too much protein. It's, it's too much for our bodies to really even utilize or process. It's kind of a, a waste. Yeah. Know? So you get plenty of protein on plants. You know, some people will say that. And of course, there's amazing bodybuilders like, you know, who have never eaten meat in their life that are, they're bodybuilders because the way that our muscles grow is when we put them under pressure and we start to tear those muscle fibers, they have no choice besides to repair right. or, or die. And of course, if you're eating properly in an abundant, you know, abundantly mm -hmm. um, in the plant based <clears throat> realm, if, whether it's raw or cooked, you're going to, your muscles are going to grow if you work. Right. If you don't work them, they're not going to grow, you know, but we all have muscles and they become more visible. 
right. they have less body fat. But of course, they become stronger and grow the more that we train and the more that we put them under stress and pressure and tear right. those muscle fibers. So yeah. there's plenty of protein in the plant kingdom. And then of course, there's, uh, you know, I like the saying like, well, look at a silverback gorilla or a yeah. rhinoceros, you know. How strong they are. They're, you know, or a horse. You know, mm -hmm. these, these, these animals are, you know, and of course the primate's the best one because that's the closest to us, right? We're the closest to the primate or vice versa. And they are massive and they don't eat, but you know, like- They're raw vegans. They're raw vegans, man. Like, <laughs> and the reason that they're so massive is because of the kind of movements that they do and they swing from the trees and they're climbing trees every day yeah. and that kind of yeah. stuff. So, yeah, there it is. There the it proof is. is in the pudding. Yeah. You yeah. can get enough protein, people. Just eat yeah. enough protein. <laughs> you know, there was um there was this uh documentary that was just released called Game Changers. Did you see oh, that? Oh, I did. That was good. Wasn't that amazing? I mean, there's <clears> it was. really cool documentaries like that and it just goes to show like it, you know, if if it were to be all about money, right and you know it's all about profits and gains you know um it makes sense that that there has been say this this uh propaganda or this this mindset of having to eat a lot of um you know animal flesh as mm -hmm. the protein to be able to grow big and strong or to drink a lot of milk to get strong bones but it's really cool that at this point in time we're finding a lot of people come out with really compelling science scientific you know studies and research showing that oh these things actually are causing more you know harm you know it's more detrimental to our our bodies than than what we've thought to be and especially now like you know we're all, oh more is better right you know i'm gonna eat you know lean chicken or turkey at every single meal yeah and another thing that's interesting too is they say that animal flesh protein sits in our in our uh digestive so they like in the intestines for 72 hours before it actually passes through us three so, days yeah so it's putrefying and there's you know different things happening there it's really hard on our body yeah to assimilate it so yeah and there's plenty of protein in the in the in the plant in the plant kingdom there is there is four cups of broccoli is like 12 grams of protein right there so there you go nah. yeah. <laughs> just yeah. eat like 20 cups a day and you'll be good no i'm just kidding yeah <clears throat> um, I want to keep, I want to stay in the time pr frame I told you, because I don't want to oh, yeah. keep you, Good. but I want you to tell them about your book, tell them okay. about your book and where they can find it, or in what your social media handles are, your YouTube, your Instagram, or whatever your, okay. your social medias are. Sure, sure, thank you. So, oh. in this process of switching over to this new diet, slash lifestyle because it's a diet you know but it, it it does become a lifestyle um i i was thinking like how am i going to be able to to you know hit the sweet tooth right so i really, <laughs> have, a, I really have a sweet tooth i love sweet stuff and i loved loved ice cream like I, we would have a lot i grew up with you know my parents would buy the big like costco totes of ice cream we had so much ice cream um so I found nice cream, what's called nice cream. So it's banana ice cream. And the way, the reason it's called nice cream is because there's no dairy. And of course, you know, with dairy is scary and all the things that happen in the dairy industry, it's, it's not nice. So this is <laughs> nice cream. And uh, that really changed my life too, because I would add that to my diet every single day. I would have the nice cream. And mm -hmm. uh, I actually started selling nice cream um, at work and to other friends because they were just like they were blown away that there was no dairy in it. Yeah, and uh, you know, super creamy and delicious. So I started compiling all sorts of different recipes. And um, after getting with Lissa, she was really pumping me like, "You should make a book. You should write a book." And I'm like, "Ah, you know, yeah, okay. I don't know. I don't know how to write a book. What am I gonna do? You know, like, oh, take a couple pictures of some ice cream. Like, I'll, <laughs> I'll show people how to make it." And, so we just started really compiling more and more recipes over over the time period of a, like a year. And um, so, yeah, we just, we decided, okay, you know, like she, she's like, I'll help you. I'm like, I don't know how to publish it. I don't know how to do uh, InDesign and put all the pictures in. Yeah. I'm like, I have to take a whole course on how to do that. I don't really know how to do that. And uh, so we, we put it together 
um, together. We put it together together. So yeah, I wrote the story. I have my story in there and why vegan and why I'm raw and how I met Lissa. And uh, yeah, we have over a hundred uh, recipes in the book. Um, you know, there's some, there's a lot of no fat recipes. There's some low fat recipes and then there's some higher fat recipes. And then there's some like uh, naughtier, uh, maybe naughty is not the right word. Um, you know, but some <laughs> recipes that may not be looked upon in the, you know, the real strict Puritan mindset community yeah. as is, you know, proper, um, you know, the food combining. Um, but yeah, you know, sauces and different drizzles and stuff to, you know, mm. up your ice cream. Yeah. And, uh, the pictures turned out so amazing. And, and, that was um, the part that I was really excited about is because you know how we eat with our eyes, right? Yeah. So these pictures are delicious. They and are. You want to like lick the page. You know, <laughs> so. You're right. Uh, I do. <laughs> yeah. So we just released that book in August. Um, and uh, yeah, super excited about it. We've had some really good responses. And of course, the goal is just to get people off of ice cream. Right. You know, if they can get away from dairy, kind of reclaim their dairy freedom, so to speak, you know, um, it's you know it's a start because i know a lot of people like ice cream we all have like a special place in our heart for ice cream yes so, yeah so guilt, that just, and it's guilt free yeah guilt exactly. free guilt free yeah we just released that in august and um yeah and that can be found uh, it can be purchased via amazon mm -hmm. um it's called the inside scoop and uh yeah i also can be found on different uh, social media platforms which is instagram is nice cream king all mm -hmm. one word nice cream king and uh i'm on youtube as raw natty nate and that's um yeah maybe you could put the link in or whatever yeah it's, it's and and number eight that's how yeah. i used to sign my my art pieces is because you sound it out it's nate you know right. some people don't get that they're like and number eight <laughs> <So>. <laughs> i'll put it in the, in the description below you guys and on the screen Cool, cool. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, and um, that's pretty much the, you know, the, I mean, I'm on Facebook as well. Um, same, I, I think it's Raw mm. Natty Nate on Facebook, but I'm really mostly active on Instagram and I need to get some YouTubes out. I haven't put a YouTube out in, I think, like four months or something. Yeah, you slacking, Nate. I, I'm, I I'm, I've been waiting. I'm like, where, come on, Nate. <laughs> I'm slacking so bad. No, it's just I was just uh, commenting to Lisa. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been like four months. I really need to get some YouTubes going for sure. You've been fo I think you've been focused on your Instagram. That's why. Yeah, focusing there, and um, you know, I had a couple of uh, different, you know, things. You know, I, it's been a pretty wild year for all of us. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, I, had, I was working a couple different jobs, um, which you know um, was great, but yeah, really keeping you busy and. Of course, I would imagine in my head, oh, I should just film my day, what I'm eating today, you know, because yeah. people are always really curious, like, what are you eating, you know? Yeah, but, that, that's, those are my favorite types of videos to watch. I love watching, especially you and your wives. I love it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, anyway, you guys, make sure you check, check out his, um, his book. I just purchased it about two weeks ago. I also purchased his wife's book, um, Meal Plan Volume 3 and 50, 52 to a New You. So nice. check out their check out their um, websites, their Instagrams, their YouTube, and purchase the books. You guys, you, ice cream. We're talking about some guilt-free ice cream here. You guys yep. can eat ice cream and feel good about it afterwards. Right. You don't have to every feel, meal, you know, every you meal of the day. Some days right. we're really feeling kind of lazy, you know, and as we look at each other, like, what do you want for dinner? <laughs> nice, nice cream. You know, we'll just have an ice cream for dinner. I know? do that too. I do that too. It, it's not just a dessert. It could yeah. be a meal. It could be yeah, breakfast. Yeah. It could be lunch, dinner, whatever you want to eat it. it. That's right. It's just That's fruit. Right. <clears throat> That's right. Just bananas. You know, with some other, you know, <laughs> different types of fruit mixed in with it. But you guys check it out. His the pictures are amazing, and they're and they're beautiful, and and it just really. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. <laughs> Get you salivating. Yeah. Hey, I, like, I like your earrings, Nicole. I wanted oh, to, thank to you. compliment you on those. Those are beautiful. I love the thank colors. Thank you so much. That's our I, colors right there, teal and pink. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Um, I got these at one of those, like, beauty supply stores. They were, like, $1.50. <laughs> Three score. I'm all about, I'm all about, um, what's that word? I'm frugal. So yeah, I like, frugal. I like cheap things that are nice. 
Yeah, that's right. You're thrifty. Yes. That's right. Uh, well, anyway, thank you so much, Nate. I yeah, really appreciate likewise. you joining me. Um, you guys, make sure you check them out. And I thank you guys for watching this video. There's more to come. Um, if you notice, I've been interviewing raw vegans lately. It's because I'm very intrigued with the life school, life school, lifestyle. And I actually eat high raw myself. I'm not fully raw yet, but I do get um, encouraged and inspired by all these people I follow. So I decided I wanted to bring them on my channel and talk about their stories. So I hope you guys enjoyed this um, interview with Nate and I will see you guys in the next video.